Greetings and salutations, Linux junkies. This is Daniel Bornt here, and this is my look at Endless OS. Uh, so I've already gotten this set up in VirtualBox, so I will fire, fire up VirtualBox really quick. You can see I have an Endless here. I'm going to go into the settings real quick so I can kind of show you guys what my settings look like. How I've set this up. I've done Endless Linux, I picked Debian 64-bit. Um, I didn't really play around with these much at all. For the system, I gave it 4 gig of RAM, which I think is plenty. Um, for processors, I've given it two of my eight cores. Uh, I could probably give it more, but two of the eight cores seems to be just fine. Uh, I did enable the PAENX, uh, and that, I don't think I set that. I think that was already checked by default. For the display, I gave it the full 128 megabytes of video RAM. I did one monitor. I set it to VBOX VGA, and I did the enable the 3D acceleration. Nothing for remote display or recording. Storage. Um... I created a 30 gig virtual drive. You can see fully installed, it's taking up 26. It's a big, I, I did the big file. So Endless comes with two different um, files. You can get two different ISOs. You can get the small ISO, which is you know your standard, I think two gig. And then you can get the full ISO, which is 16 gig. I actually did the 16 gig. So I set my, uh, my uh, storage to be 30 gig. It's already used up 26 gig just doing the full install. I didn't really screw with any of the audio. I didn't have to screw with any of the networking. I didn't do anything here. I didn't do anything under USB or the shared or the user interface. So that's pretty much what I did with that. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up the virtual machine. I am going to switch to full screen mode. so that it actually comes up correctly. I had a little bit of trouble with the full screen mode at one point because I'm hoping I remember the password I put in here. Ah. There we go. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you first boot into Endless. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that this looks like the GNOME Activities screen, only frozen to the desktop. I'm still trying to figure out how they do this. Um, it's kind of interesting. It threw me a little bit when I first saw it. And a couple of the folks that I talked to in the Biddle, in the uh, Big Daddy Linux uh, community rooms, I belong to their Discord channel, um, also Discourse, and uh, try to get on uh, Big Daddy Linux Live when I can. But I was talking to a couple people in there, and um, I don't know. This is this is very interesting to me. It's different. Um, I'm not so sure what I think about it. It's kind of a cool concept, but since I've been using um, Pop! OS on my laptop as my main distribution so far, I'm so used to just having the activities, this activities pop up or HUD come up when I hit the Windows key that I don't necessarily see a need for this, but I guess if you're going for you know, new users or educational purposes or whatever, maybe throwing it right right at them like this is a good way to go. Um, so there's a couple of things about this that, uh, that I noticed right off the bat. First of all, this little button down here, which is normally your apps menu, is really just your current applications that are open. 
So it kind of confused me because I went down here automatically to try to look for it and click this little button to get a list of all the apps, thinking that that's what that was, and it's not. So a tad bit confusing, you know, now that I know what it is. And obviously they give you the mouse over uh, hint, so it kind of helps. So really all your apps are self-contained here. You can get to more apps because they've grouped them in here. So like they've given you the main apps that they want to present up front. So like you've got Google Chrome installed, you've got a documents folder, you've got LibreOffice Writer. LibreOffice Calc, Impress, the, the Encyclopedia, which gets installed with the with the large version, but not with the small version. Uh, Get VLC, which is not going to launch VLC, but what it will do is it will actually launch, I believe if you click that, it actually launches the installer to download VLC. Uh, Facebook, WhatsApp. YouTube, which I believe just launch web pages, so we can even hit that and check, right? So this actually launches um, Facebook, but I don't think it's a... I'm not really sure what this is. I don't know if this is an actual app or what. I haven't quite figured that out yet. Um, but then you have these groupings. So if you go into media it gives you a secondary drop down of what they have in the media. So photo editor, photos, get Spotify, and anytime you see get, it basically means it's a shortcut to the installer for that particular program. So it's not installed by default, but it's a pointer or a shortcut to get you to install it. Videos, Tux Paint, Audacity, World, uh, World Literature, uh, GIMP, a link to the Blender tutorials, and then drawing tutorials, right? Click on it, it goes back away. Curiosity, uh, just a bunch of stuff. So a lot of this stuff is uh, primarily made for uh, educational purposes. So I haven't gone through every single one of these yet. I just started playing around with this um, VM over the weekend. And then... Um, this is really my first shot at actually getting in here and playing around with it. Uh, there's some games in here. So, you know, you've got Missile Math, some just some basic games, right? Nothing too sophisticated, but just some simple games to play. Uh, games to Hack, which I'm assuming are programmable games here. And then they give you the Get Unity, which Unity is a uh, framework for writing your own games. Um, my guess is, is that the Unity that it's going to do is it's going to give you the install of the Unity game engine, which will then allow you to write games in, probably in C Sharp, because most of the games are in C, mo most Unity games are in C Sharp. And since C Sharp's been um, open sourced and um, ported to Linux using the Mono probably the mono framework I'd have to go check but um, this will help this this basically is again a shortcut to the installer all of these installers by the way that I've noticed they're actually pulling from flat hub so they're using flat packs to do all these installations um, learn to code so you've got our Duro projects CSS tutorials HTML tutorials Raspberry Pi projects and video games so, social, it's, you know, Twitter, Gmail, and then get Skype. Again, that's going to be a shortcut to the installer. Cooking, which is basically, I believe, just a recipes app. I'd have to find out what this is. So the one thing I've noticed is that I don't really know what some of this software is, but there is one way that you can find out. Um, you can still hit this button here to get back to this screen, and then um, dark one, 
uh, pointed out when we were chatting that if you just start typing, it will do a search in the Google search here, but it'll also search what's on your system. So if you're looking for terminal, you can literally just type, start typing terminal, and then it'll come up with a terminal, and you can, if it's the only one there, you can hit it. And I don't know if HTOP is installed by default. It is. So we should be able to see from here, we might be able to figure out what this, what this game is. Or what this program is. I'm trying to see if I could figure out what... A gnome shell, a lot of gnome shell stuff in here. Here it is. So it's a G application service, endlesscooking.en. So again, I'm not really sure what that link is actually running. I'd have to do some more. Um, I'd have to do some more investigation. But this is obviously a cooking program, so you can close that. Uh, music is going to open up Rhythm Box. And there is music, a ton of music preloaded on the um, large version. It's all, I'm assuming it's all open source music. Uh, Rhythm Box is kind of cool. I haven't played around with it in a long time, but like you can get podcasts in here. Uh, it's got music. Uh, FM, I think, is. Uh, I don't know what the FM extensions are, radio. So there's some radio on here that you can get, like free radio stations. Um, I haven't played any of this music yet. There, there's a bunch on here. So, I mean, it's all very, more applications obviously takes you to the App Center. You can tell you can actually figure out what's installed on your system by going to that more applications and then clicking installed and this is going to tell you everything that's actually installed. So in this case you can kind of see what it is so cooking this kind of tells you what it is. This looks like it's a custom endless app. So some of these might actually be custom endless apps. You can always go to the developer website if you're interested in any of that, like background on what some of these apps are. Um, but this tells you everything that's actually installed on your system. And it'll let you uninstall it too, like if there's stuff on here that you don't want. And then here's all the system apps, right? So you've got, you know, Brazero. So these look like they're all... So these are all your system apps. And there's some add-ons here. Uh, updates, if you have any updates, they'll, they'll be in here too. So that's kind of cool. And like I said, if you're looking for something specific, you can always type for it. Like if you were looking for... Um, let's say photos, something to do with photos. You can actually type in photos. It'll give you anything that's installed for photos. It'll also give you App Center stuff that you can mess around with for photos. Like you can get GNOME photos, right? You can get Shotwell, Fondo, Darktable, XN Sketch. Um, it'll actually search the encyclopedia for the word photo help center so it's kind of a cool little search tool or you can search google for photos which is kind of cool um, so again that feature is kind of cool um, 
up here if you click this little thing it gives you this weird like masterpiece of the day so I'm assuming this is like a, a painting and if you click it it's gonna take you to the wiki art and the idea behind this honestly is that a lot of this stuff is actually kept right on the machine so like what you're seeing here is stuff that's preloaded so you're not going out to the internet to get it so you have a masterpiece of the day you have a quote of the day and then you have a word of the day and then they've got some you know install some great apps to discover great content Uh, down here, there's some quick links to the App Center, to Google Chrome, and to your to the documents. If we go to documents, which you can get from either there or here, you know, it's your standard, uh, looks like GNOME files. So, you know, you go into documents. You can check your downloads, see if there's anything there. There's probably nothing much in here. There's some sample pictures in here, right? So there's some of that in there. There's some sample videos. Over here, you've basically got your standard um, train notification icon. So, like here, you've got your 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 what your your network connection, your volume controls, and then your battery. So basically gives you all three like you click it once it's one for all three and then you can get your you know you got power settings here it tells you if you're fully charged automatic updates um, one of the things that came up is like how do you log out this is obviously your clocks so if you come up your notifications would display here and then here's your standard calendar um, if you click this little icon, I change my icon normally when you first install it by default, it's a little flower, I change it to this guy. If you click this, this is where it's your name, and then you can get to settings, you can set up your social accounts, help, then here's your log out, your lock, and your power off. If you go to the settings button, it just takes you basically to the user settings. You could set default applications. So like if you if you had a different calendar or you wanted to change your different default music, that kind of stuff. Um, this again, if you mouse into the corner, it's supposed to show it's supposed to give you open apps. So I think what happens there is if you um let's open up a couple apps. Let's open up Libre Writer. Or LibreOffice, and let's uh, minimize that, and let's open up. I don't know. Let's go into Media and open up Audacity. All right. So I think if you go into this corner, right, it'll show you the. That gives you that look. So it gives you kind of your your um your like snapshot view if you want to call it that i don't really know what that's called here if you click that it shows open app so i'm not really sure i think it just takes you to the last open app that you had so uh, you can close them from there which is kind of cool switch to them from there uh, the encyclopedia I mean if you're into that kind of stuff it's kind of cool you basically come in here and you search for something like if you search for Linux right it's gonna give you results for Linux so you're gonna click on Linux and then it's gonna tell you oh look there's tux and then it's gonna give you this blurb and I believe all of this stuff comes from is curated from Wikipedia. You got navigation, or oh, excuse me, buttons. So you can do like Linux distribution, um, Linux kernel. Uh, 
Um, what else can you search? You could search. That's probably not in there. Oh. Oh, look at that list of Linux distributions. So there you go, Pac-Man base distribution. So in this case, they've got it all listed out by you know, the um, package manager. Um, I believe you can change this. You can change the background. So they've got some backgrounds preloaded. So like if you wanted to change your wallpaper, you could do that. Um, once you get into the settings, you can get to some of the other the other looks, right? I believe if you type themes or appearance, let's see. Let's search for settings. So if we go to settings, so here's the settings menu. See, I don't really know about, um, like if you go to displays, you really can't change yeah, you really can't change the, uh, I haven't found a good way to change the theme yet. I don't even know if you can change the theme in this. I mean, that's really it. You don't really get much else in here. A lot of it's locked down. I mean, you can obviously get the settings from here too. There's a bunch of different ways to get there. Um, but, Yeah, I mean, first impressions, you know, I guess for the intended purpose, it's, it's all right. I'm still curious to know what some of these are. I don't know if these are like their own apps that are curated in here. That take you to to a specific web page and just display the web page inside of a inside of its own like little app container. Um, that desktop is actually pretty hard to read with that stuff. Oh, I look. Sorry, kind of nice. Yeah, that one works. The water. Um, I mean, so that's really much it. Now, in their app center, I mean, they do have a bunch of apps, right? So they've got featured apps. Like, you can get Steam, you can get textbooks. If it's checked and it's already installed, if 
it's cloud, it's something, if there's a cloud, that means it's something that you can download, basically is what that means. Uh, so you can go to learn, learning, learning, and it should curate in all those. Um, you can do dev tools. I mean, so there's actually a lot of other applications on here. So like you can get a lot of your standard stuff you can search for apps so like if you I'm just curious do they have Vim on here so they have Nim and Vim and Neo Vim so if you're you know a Vim user um, multimedia what do they got in multimedia I'm sure they have OBS in here Yep, there's OBS Studio, uh, Utilities. I'm just kind of doing a quick scan here. What do they got here? I mean, they've got a lot of stuff available. And as you can see, they have both propri proprietary and non-prompt and free uh, software available for download. Excuse me. And as a matter of fact, when you install it, it actually asks you to sign a user agreement. It actually acts, makes you check, uh, sign, you know, basically sign a EULA, um, click accept on a EULA. So, I mean, it's pretty cool. Like, if you wanted to install Firefox, you could do that. And again, most of them are either sourced from their their own repos or their flat pack. So in this case, this is a web browser that's sourced from their flat pack. So or for the, from their repo. So if it says OS Tree Endless M, this is their own repository. And then obviously, if this says flat pack, it would be a flat pack. I wonder how long it's going to take to download and install this. It's going pretty fast. And then you'd have Firefox. So the interaction experience isn't too bad. It's not very customizable in terms of theming. Um, the interface is kind of what you see is what you get that I can see. I mean, I haven't dug, like I said, I haven't dug into it too much. Um, But, I mean, all in all, it's a pretty cool experience. Um, I don't think it's necessarily for me. Maybe the stripped-down version would be kind of cool to play around with. I'm going to keep it on a VM and play with it some more because I kind of, uh, you know, I just enjoy checking out other distros and whatnot. But, like, the concept is interesting. Baking all this stuff in by default and having just this big, flat, massive dump of information that's accessible. I do think it's kind of interesting how they keep that activities menu um, pinned to the, pinned to the back to the desktop. I've never seen that before in a distri any distribution that I've looked at so far that I've personally looked at so I think that's kind of interesting. Um, there's a couple of different things that I would I would probably change. Like these things down here, like I'm not so sure about this, like show. So this is like a show desktop, show applications thing. Um, it doesn't really give you multiple workspaces. Like if you hit alt up, it does. If you hit alt down, it does that. If you hit alt to the, you know, alt left, it does that. If you hit alt right, it does that. If you hit alt up, it maximizes it. But it doesn't really give you multiple workspaces, which is kind of weird.
So now I'll put Firefox here. So I'm assuming you could drag this somewhere else. Um, I'm assuming you, uh, you can add folders. So like if you wanted to add a folder here, you could call it web stuff, right? Which is kind of cool. And then you, it looks like you can drag apps into it, all right? So you can create your own sub menus if you really wanted to, which is kind of cool. And again, any of these you can type just by, you don't have to do anything. Once you're at the home screen, you can just literally type, start typing and it will automatically start searching. So you can t search for Firefox, hit enter, and it launches Firefox. So that's kind of cool, right? Um. So yeah, I mean, all in all, it's different. Well, I'll put it that way. Um, uh, it would take some, it would definitely take some getting used to. And the fact that I like to hack around on my on my computer and hack around on my distribution and tweak it, I'd probably end up spending a lot of time like trying to hack into the back end of this to like find out. Like I'm assuming I don't know if I could install tweaks or not. I'm assuming that if I could get to the flat packs hub. I could probably install GNOME Tweaks and change the theme. But I don't know what that would do overall to the stability of Endless OS in and of itself. Like, I mean, you can go to Firefox and you can go to the Flat Pack Hub, Flat Hub, right? So you can do Flat Hub. And you could probably um, find GNOME Tweaks, right? I'm sure there's a flat pack for it. So they do not have a flat hub of GNOME Tweak. Huh? Let's see, they have MPV. Yeah, so you might not even be able to do it. That's kind of a bummer. Anyway, there might be a way to do it. I just don't know how to do it off the top of my head. But anyway, I hope somebody finds this video somewhat enjoyable. This is like my first long form distribution review. So I'm sure, um, I'm sure it sucks pretty bad, but I said I was going to start doing these. I promised myself I was going to start doing these, and I'm going to put this out there. And so please uh, comment plus and minus. You know, positive and negative comments are always welcome. Subscribe to my channel if you feel like it. And um, I hope you liked my uh, my tour here of Endless OS. I hope you got something out of it. And I hope you all have a great night.